This week on Getting Deep, we had Jack Curry, a man who spent three to four years homeless while battling drug addiction and eventually changing his tune after going to jail. And we spoke about everything that it is to be homeless, how you can survive on the streets, what he did in the streets, and what happened while he was there. What was the first night being homeless like? Fucking horrible. Yeah. It's a dark touch to put it bluntly, but um, yeah. uh, frightening. Yeah. Um, it's a lot of emotions, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, when you actually, you know, there's a lot of sitting on the phone and you're trying to call people and, oh, can I come around for a night or fucking, yeah. or, you know, oh, hey, mate or friend or buddy or pal, but then, like, uh, I'd just broken up with my partner and uh, obviously uh, doing a lot of, a lot of drugs and, um, I wasn't very stable in my mind. I'd burnt a lot of bridges and so I didn't really have many people to call. So yeah. once, once I'd finally realised, fuck, like this is it. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a whole new world. It becomes like, where do I go? What do I do? Like, yeah. luckily, luckily, I ran into a little fella called Dylan. I was 20 at the time. He was only 16. But I mean, he'd been doing it for um, a fair, fair while, you know, little, little New Zealand kid. And he sort of... Not took me under his wing because I was older then, but you know, like showed me like, oh, brother, it's not that bad, you know. And like, yeah, funny enough, he had, he had a bit of dope on him, so that was a good conversation. We went out to session, and he's like, oh, you know, you kick back here, and I mean, if you actually, when you know, you know, you know, like yeah. there, there's places in the city like abandoned old judo, like uh, gym just off um, Winnicott Road. Yeah. Like, and I mean, you, you've got to climb up a building and get on someone's roof and crawl through a window, but it's this big gymnasium, and it's just like where they used to train judo. Yeah. And I mean, it's pretty dirty and whatnot, but I mean, there's heaps of little areas around. Yeah. Where if you, know, you need a rest edge, you can. They're just abandoned for a bit, and you yeah. can just like, fuck so it. So, running in, first night running into him, it was probably good because yeah. he, um, yeah, made it not so fucking stressful being on your own. Yeah, I, mean, I suppose if you didn't bump into someone that had a little bit of info, it's just like... Yeah, and I mean, you run into a few people, like you hang out with him for a few days, you know, and then, you know, well, after the first week, you've met half the people out there. Yeah. So, I mean, it just becomes easy after that. What, what suburb was it that you... City. In the city, just... City, yeah. So, you kind of like, were you in the city like, I know I'm probably going to not have a place tonight? Yeah, like, when I... Once I'd finally knuckled down and went, yeah, this is me, I'm, I'm fucking not even about trying to call anyone anymore. Yeah. City, I didn't leave the city. I didn't catch a train any further than Leaderville, and I didn't catch a train any further than um, Elizabeth Cray yeah. for about six months. And just that's it, just in Yeah, like I was area. within that CB, CBD, Leaderville area for six months straight. Yeah. Yeah. Just finding the places to stay for a bit. Well, yeah. You know, like I used to go to Leaderville to sleep because there was a 24-hour RGA there. You know, everyone wants, likes to feed before bed, you know? Yeah. So you always go to the 24-hour IGA and they always had hot food there and, or fruit salad or a few coming down or whatever, you know? Like yeah. Get a juice and uh, refresh. And there was a good little... Um, next to the IGA there, there was like a rooftop. You can climb on top of a bin and get on top of the roof. and then, But up there, no one ever looks up, funny enough. So <laughs> you, you could always know that your shit was safe there. I used to stash my shit there. Yeah. You'd have bags of shit and you just drop your bags there and come back. Literally three weeks later sometimes, and it was still there. It was always there. It's probably there now. I've yep. probably still got shit there now, like, legitimately. But, um, yeah, I don't know. So it's just a matter of, like how, mu- how, like, how much crap would you try and collect at the same time and try and, like, hide it? Because, obviously, you didn't have anywhere to store it. So you had to, like... Well, in the beginning, it was sort of just for survival, you know? Like, yeah. it's sort of only, like, uh, collected. That's a good word. For, yeah, collected what I needed, you know? Yeah. So, like, it was only, like, food or... It hadn't quite developed into what it was, uh, yeah. what it become, sort of further into it, which was sort of like, um, you know, anything and everything. Like, you know, I've, anything under $1,000 wasn't jailable from stealing. Yeah. Um, that was how, unfortunately, how I made a lot of my um, profits or money or drugs or however you want to put it. But, yeah, it was bad, you know. Like, you'd $900 bag, go stash it. $900 bag, go stash it. $900 bag, go stash it. If you ever got caught... You only get another CBO. I was on six different CBOs at one point. Yeah, what's the CBO? Just for community based order. Community based order. Yeah. yeah. So like when you get done for something, you know, you go to court and they can't send you to jail, but you've been a naughty boy, so we have to give you something like it's just a paper trail to yeah. So it's keep just a track here, really. Like a thing, realistically, you'd be like you're gonna do better. Yeah. Or if you're not gonna do better, we're gonna know about it before you get much worse. So yeah, yeah. yeah it's just keeping tabs on you. Yeah, and that's like if you get caught for stealing something, right? Or if you any crime that's not really jailable, you know, like that needs some sort of punishment, so it's yeah, recognised. Like yeah. a mark on your record, really. So that's all it is. Yeah, it's just it's literally just a paper trail, really. Yeah, yeah you got to go there once a week and report, and 
they ask you how your life is and I don't know, you lie to them and, well, I mean, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's, it's the same as being on parole, really. Okay, so it's like a non-jail parole. Yeah, like, you know, you've got conditions and you can't drink and you can't do this and you can't do that. But yeah. on a CBO, it's not as strict, so you won't get your conditions. Like, you might not be allowed to leave after 6 o'clock, but you yeah. don't have to do drug tests. CBO is like being on bail, then? Well, yeah. Similar, yeah. Similar, yeah. similar. Yeah. Similar. And so, like, if you break them, then you can so, go like, to yeah, jail. If you just say you break your CBO, then, yeah, you breach. Yeah. And if you breach, then that is a jailable offence, breaching your CBO. Yeah. So it's just, I don't know. And you had 16 of them at once? Six, yeah, six. Six, six. Which okay. is like... Yeah, normally you only get one and if you breach it you're fucked and yeah but you can kind of stack them up because you're not doing any crimes that well, are yeah anything under a thousand dollars for stealing which was my main offence yeah. was, wasn't jailable and because I knew that it was just, I just, it was, just don't get caught selling yeah so just keep it under a thousand bucks if you get a bag of nine hundred dollars go put it somewhere and go get another you know and then yeah. take all your bags at the end of the day and it's silly but, yeah yeah so then do they ever have a limit or do you, know, do you know if there's not a limit? Is it like a... A limit on what? Like how many CBOs you can get? Oh, no, nah, I'm, I'm not 100%. Yeah, no. Nah. To be honest, like, I've always slipped through the gaps and I've always, I've always been pretty dishonest with them. Like, <laughs> in saying that, though, I've, sometimes I've been that honest with them, they think I'm telling them bullshit, you know? Yeah, yeah, Like, with my parole officer now as an example, like, I will pass my parole 100%. Like, I know that in my mind. But it's after the parole, which is what I say to my parole officer. Yeah. Uh, who knows what's going to happen? Yeah. Like, am I going to go back to that? Like, who? Like, yeah. Because you've got, like, someone to hold you accountable at that point. Yeah, because I don't want to go back to jail. Yeah. Which is the whole point of parole. You know what I mean? Like, if we put him on parole, then he can't go back to the same life, you know? Yeah. Which is... Because it's a lot the easier. The chance. The chance, you know? Yeah. But, I mean, yeah, I don't know. Parole officers, so, like, you just stop going to parole. Or you, your parole ends and then... You, the world's, you better, you world's, back in, yeah, world's back in your hands and... I suppose there's, like... I guess there's justification for a business then already straight off the top of my head where it's like you, your own parole officer, like you could hire a parole officer. But it's not a parole officer. It's just someone to be like, you got to come here and remind me that you're not doing what you're going to do to get you in jail. Well, that's fucking what most people call a good friend or something, you know? Yeah, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like a friend or a partner or... But it's not, it's not... I suppose it's not as like... For a friend or a partner, it's more likely to be lied to and because it's like, well, yeah. you can just stop paying that person, you know? Yeah, a yeah. friend or a partner, you're not going to be like, oh, I, I want to get rid of you because I like you. But if you've got someone you're paying to be like, remind me that I can't suck, you can just stop paying and then you're like, well, it's your fault. Yeah, well, do I suck again? <laughs> yeah. I forgot to pay the bill, like. Yeah. I don't know, man. Like, do you really want to pay for someone to validate you? I don't. No, yeah. But, but, oh, that, that doesn't mean... Yeah, oh, yeah. The way you said that, then I was like, yeah, me neither. But fuck, there are some people out there that really, yeah. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. You know, it's, it's, yeah. That's how businesses are made, man. Yeah. It's like, what does somebody else want? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Validation and acceptance, really. Yeah, you know? Yeah. But if, you, if you lack neither of them, then you're going to go find it elsewhere, aren't you? Well, no. ma well, majority. Yeah, there's people. There's, you know, they're out there. Let's not name them. Let's not name them. <laughs> so what, like, being on the street, what was probably, like... The, the the best part about it. What was the best part about being on the street? Freedom. Freedom. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, hundred percent. Um once you've accepted it like knowing you haven't got anything else really to lose. Um you got the backpack on your bag, um which is generally too much already. But I mean it's the freedom, the people like it sounds very lonely, but there's a lot of homeless people. Yeah. So like obviously sort of honor amongst thieves, if you will, like in a sense like it's it's bad, you, but you, you you're not lonely. Is yeah. what I'm trying to get at. So, um, but no, the freedom's definitely the best bit. I mean, you got Wi-Fi everywhere these days. There's hot water showers around now. There's barbecues. If you want to go to the beach, you go to the beach. If you like, there's public transport. Like, you don't. If you're willing to, like, I don't know, do illegal things, like it's. it's I mean, if you're homeless, you're probably. Yeah. If once it becomes a survival, if yeah. you don't mind stealing a hot chicken to eat then it's fucking easy, man. Yeah. Like, it really is easy. It's like Food's all you really need. And if you look at it, like, you can justify anything, really, but it's victimless crime. Like, yeah. Like, if you're stealing from shops, Woolworths, Coles, <laughs> sorry, but, yeah, <laughs> but, like, you know, like, they're multi-million dollar businesses. They, yeah. They've fucking, they've got margins for theft. They've got insurance for theft. They've got, everything's accounted for at the end of the day. Yeah. And, like, I'm sorry that I've made your groceries more expensive because of, you know, what I'm taking, but, like, yeah. I don't know. We all got to eat at the end of the day. Well, that's, I mean, like, I swear, I reckon, I say this, but then I, I, I feel that definitely people disagree, but 
if you if it was if they had their charity that was hey pay 10 percent on your grocery bill and we make sure 10 percent that goes to feeding homeless people you know people be like yeah i'll do that everyone will do it australia yeah. like telethon is an example just to bring that out pluck that out of nowhere like when it comes to donating australia like we want to help people yeah like we are willing to give money like yeah that's where a lot of other countries, you know, they struggle. Like, they try to run... Like, America tries to run telephone and everyone just looks at it like it's fucking weird, you know? Like... Yeah. I don't know, we raised fucking millions last year, you know? like Millions every year. Yeah, every and consistently, and probably will, more and more every year, like... Yeah. And, um... So, like, we want to help people. Yeah. Like, but it's so... Well, I mean, if, if, if everyone looks at their shopping bill that way, like, 10% of it is probably covering theft and that, and it's making sure homeless yeah. people get fed, you can be like, ah, okay, I guess this is justifiable. Well, yeah, if, I mean... If They're still profitable businesses. 100%. Like, 100%. more than 100% profit, to be fair. Like, who's robbing who? They're bo- like, they've robbed the farmer. Like, yeah. Like, oh, I'll never go to, like, a good grocer or an IGA or... Yeah, like an independent, an independent place. Yeah, so that's my justification. Yeah. So, like, I guess that's how I sleep at night. So, it comes down to, like, you know, what we were saying earlier, with the whole moral, moral compass thing, you know? Like, if it's not morally incorrect, then, like, my morally incorrect, then I'm willing to do it. Yeah. So like I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna go rape a kid or fucking you know bash an old lady for a purse from a habit, but yeah, fuck you know like you are gonna rack a chicken yeah, every night. I'll then. go fucking I'll go to Meyer and fill up a pram, you know like <laughs> you're like fuck man. Yeah. Who wants to pay 190 dollars for a t-shirt? Oh man, look I'm I'm a tight ass so. Hey, but if I told you I could get you that 190 dollar t-shirt for 30 percent of the price, would you be keen? <laughs> <laughs> fucking hey, we've just opened up a whole new market, haven't we? You know. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's, that, was, that was a lot of the way you made a bit of money as well, not just mm. food. It was like stealing yeah, well, pointless shit from places like Maya. Yeah, survival. I've become addicted to stealing. That was, yeah. I say that, for, that was my main addiction. Yeah. Um, like, there was, even when I had a house, you know, I'd go every day, I'd go from nine till five. I treated it like a job. Yeah. Uh, different shopping centre every day, sometimes two or three different shopping centres a day. Um, and you'd get home, put everything on the bed, and you just look at it like, Fucking go to bed, you know. Like you wouldn't even, I wouldn't even get home to swap it anymore. Like I, that, I'd got my fix out of the day, you know. Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, ooh, my thrill, like my kick, and um, you got four grand of shit sitting on your bed, and you're just like, well, fuck, what do I do with it? Who knows? And you end up just giving shit away. Like it, survival turns into that become my main addiction. It, like I wasn't doing it for survivability anymore. It was like, oh, let's even get a watermelon. Like just because I didn't, who the fuck can get out of the shop with a watermelon? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean that's a pretty wild thing to steal. Like, oh, f- like a watermelon is pretty big. I could go through a list and blow you more. Like, it's. it's well, I'm curious, if, like a watermelon, how big? How big was? Oh, like, and this this was all because like so, I was at the Raffle Hotel having a few beers with a mate, and uh, and one of our other mates he just got a hotel around the corner, so he's called us like come around to the hotel. Can you go grab a watermelon? And I was thinking, oh yeah, no worries. I so we went to grab a watermelon, and I was like, oh. I wonder if we can gank it, like, fuck, we'll get two. So my mate paid for one and I got the other one out, so he was paying while I slipped out. And it was all because I wanted to throw one off his balcony of, yeah. of the hotel. And it just started off that, but you know what I mean? Like, you shouldn't be able to get out of anywhere with a watermelon or, like, a two-and-a-half-thousand-dollar camera set up or, like, a duffel bag full of makeup or GHD hair straight, like, yeah. a 60-inch TV, fucking... <laughs> Like, the TV is pretty wild. That's like it's just like again comes down to confidence. Like yeah, I, like you, silly. You just walk straight out. Oh, I got it from somewhere else. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's, that's from here. It. No, it's not. Uh, you, all you have to get is that little bit of them to hesitate. Yeah. All you got to do is get out. You know. Yeah. Once you're out, it's security not allowed to touch you. Like um, look, I'm not glorifying fucking being a thief or nothing, but. Well, that was survival <laughs> for a bit until it was your addiction. Yeah, until it was funny my drug habit. Yeah. Um. Which was bad. Like, it obviously led me to jail. Like, it's not so much the drugs. Yes, drugs led me to jail, I guess. But, I mean, I did drugs 15 years before I went to jail. Yeah. So, it was like, you know, if you don't rob a jewellery shop, don't steal cars. Yeah. Because that's what you went away for, right? It's yeah. robbing a jewellery shop. robbing a jewellery shop and two stolen motor vehicles. Yeah. So, I mean, if you're not going to, you know, thieve off people, um, essentially, be a peasant, then you won't go to jail, right? Like, yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. No one's going to jail for possession of a gram. Like, you can be a user... And still be a good person, like... Yeah. Yeah, well, there's a, the, the underground of, like, drugs is there's a lot more people using them than people realise. Oh. And it's, like... Heck it's yes. in every every area of everything, lawyers, all sorts. Especially when we go to more rural areas. Oh, Like, it's, Geraldton, it's as an example. Yeah. Like, living in Geraldton... I went to Geraldton to try to get clean, so I was living in a squat. <laughs> and that worked <laughs> horribly. <laughs> we're good. It worked good for a bit. No, nah, yeah. so I went there with this chick and... Uh, 
living in a squat with uh, one of my mates in Scarborough and that wasn't going so well. We just went to jail for a week and 14 months later, long story short, I left. But a bit after about 11 months, I found a halfway to the shops. Just but, found it? Yeah, been clean. Uh, didn't, didn't own a hat, didn't own shoes. You know, I'm like pretty, pretty basic person, non Saint Lincoln, Geraldton. Um, I found a halfway to the shop. And For I'm, those that aren't knowing, a halfway is oh, a yeah, measurement sorry. of drugs. Yeah, sorry, sorry, yeah. <laughs> so it was like you know, half gram of meth, essentially. Yeah. I was on the floor in Woolworths and... Um, Obviously, I didn't want to use it because I'd been clean for 11 months, so I decided, yep. decided to start selling it. And, um, like, in Geraldton, man, like, the teachers, the law, like, every person up there, like, because there's nothing to do. Like, I didn't even have a cinnamons when I was living there. You yep. got one pub and a beach. And, I mean, the beach is nice, but you can only go to the beach so many times before it's sand and water. Yeah, boys. So, like, man, in, long story short, six months after I found it, I was moving back to Perth, 50 grand cash, getting run out of Geraldton, like, and just how it escalated so quick, like... Yeah. Yeah, so, Lloyd, just the people that use, like you were saying, is everybody uses, or it seems like that in Geraldton anyway. Well, country towns, I've heard, it's pretty rife everywhere. Yeah, well, there's nothing else to do. Yeah. So, everyone just gets bored, and unfortunately turned to... Bored and turns to drugs. Because, yeah, it's it, you know. So, I went from going to get clean, then end up just being part of the problem, then That's getting the, the problem. Fuck out. Yeah, so, like, every time I've tried to essentially get away from it, uh, yeah, I can get away from it, but... You find a way back. Like, <laughs> Yeah, once an addict, always an addict. Whether yeah. it's like in the back of your mind, you should, it's always there. But you think, obviously now you spent the time in jail, 11 months in. I definitely don't want to go back. Yeah. But is that enough for me to change my life? Oh, that's your that's, choice. That's, that's, <laughs> that's, that's, this is, hey, it's all a learning curve for me too. Yeah. Um, I mean, I fucking hope so. Yeah. But I mean, I lay there quite often now and just like, everything I want to do, I'm not allowed to do. Whether it's due to parole or... Locality reasons, unfortunately. Yeah. But what I, f- I find, it's just what I find fun. Yeah. It's. But then maybe it's a matter of finding, thing, finding things that are different that are fun, like finding new new things. Yeah. Oh, of course, of course. But yeah, where do you look? Yeah, well, that's the. Uh, yeah. Ah. That's the hard part, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that is the hard part. So, when you were homeless, is there any places that you think that kind of um. Actually, what's probably like the most weirdest place you slept? Like, what's the place where you slept or you stayed at for a long period of time that you were kind of like, this is pretty weird that this is happening here and this is normal? Probably um, stairwell of uh, one of the Wilson car parks in the city. Yeah? Yeah, you could get to the sixth floor and the sixth, once you got to the sixth floor, there was like a door that come out to the car park. But the car park had closed in the top at night time. So after 10 o'clock, they'd close the car park at the top so you knew no one was coming through the top door. Yeah. So you just climb to the sixth floor and you just, you know, sort of chill there. Yeah. But um, I stayed there for quite a while. But, I mean, we didn't, like I said before, we didn't, like, we didn't really sleep a lot. Yeah. So, like, you, as you didn't really have to look for, you only had to look for someone to sleep once or twice a week. Yeah. And, I mean, you weren't really looking for someone to sleep. It was sort of where you collapsed. Like, I've slept in McDonald's on fucking Hay Street. Like, yeah. you know, just passed out on the table. Like, uh, I've never been one. Like, I've never tried to... I've always made sure I haven't looked homeless. Yeah. Like, if you knew, you knew because you knew me. But, like, if you from the outside world, I always had... I always made sure I stopped myself at least one change of clothes a day. Yeah. And I always made sure I showered once a day. And I always made sure I only had one backpack and only carried one bag. Yeah. So that was just like, from the outside, you'd never know, um, which is sort of another coping mechanism, I guess. I suppose that probably helped with the whole stealing side of things. Yeah. Oh, especially. Yeah. I mean, it's going to be a lot harder to steal if oh, you look very hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. For sure. For sure. Um, yeah. So, so what do you think turns the people that were driven to you on the streets, the ones that are like, look very homeless? What do you think... That their reason for that is versus your reason for not? Self-respect. Yeah? In a sense. Um, not to say they don't have any, but, um, like, obviously you can smell yourself. Yeah. Uh, I've, always, I've always been very, like, you know, I've never wanted to, like, stink. Like, even though you're on the street, just because of walk with your friends or whoever you hang, like, a lot of them fucking stunk, you know? Yeah. So, like... That was sort of, I don't know, it comes down to self-respect though, because like, we're all doing the same things, but it's just, uh, that's the only, the only thing I can think of would be different, is that I, I gave a fuck what I looked like. I didn't want the outside world to perceive me as um, being homeless. Yeah. Because as my, like, it wasn't an option, but I, I could have done a lot, I still can. I can do a lot of things. I know what to do to help myself, 
Uh, it's just doing it. That's the bit I have trouble with. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, like, you knew you could have got out of being homeless yeah, at any like point. Yeah, like, fucking... I knew that I could have, you know, gone to home, fucking gone to seek help or got homeless help or um, fucking just got off the drugs and got a job. <laughs> yeah. Really, you know, like... Um, do you think that's the same for a lot of people on the streets or do you think they, they feel like they're stuck there? Well, it's the old crime here of everything, you know? Yeah. Like, oh, like the old sympathy story. Um, a lot of people that I've found from experience talking to them on the street, like, a lot of them don't actually... Like, they don't have to be there. Yeah. There's like, a choice. There is, there, there is somebody out there that would fucking help them. Yeah. But it's just it doesn't agree with their lifestyle. So, you know, they could go live with their auntie or they could go live with, you know, whoever, but they wouldn't be able to do the drugs they do. Or they wouldn't be able to live the lifestyle that they're not really living, but, you know, existing in. Yeah. And because of that, I won't do it then. Yeah. I'm not ready for help yet. But I, I was the same, you know, like. Yeah. And um, yeah, everyone that I sort of did let help me, uh, unfortunately, ended up burning the bridge of. Yeah. But, yeah. So it was comfortable enough to be like, nah, I'm good. Well, yeah, like, it's, it's really not that bad. Yeah. Like, everyone's pro- everyone that's never done it is probably like, oh, my God, fucking home. Oh, my God, there's no toilet, there's no this, there's no that. But, like, there is. Like, you go to the shops, don't you? And, like, when you're in Woolworths with your kids and you need to go to the toilet, you don't hold it until you get home, do you? Yeah. You know what I mean? You're like, fuck, you give your kids and there's a piss, you take them to the toilet. So there's a toilet. Like, hey, but a bim, now you've got to do this final shower. Like, and it's, once you know where they are, it's fucking, they never move. Yeah. And it's, the, the cable. It's, it's easy, man. Yeah. It's really easy, like, yeah. And it's it's lonely, but it's easy. Lonely, but like, as you said, you made quite a few friends of people doing yeah. the same thing. I mean, I wouldn't really call them friends. Just like straight... Like, I, I, I can't, call a, can't, call, yeah, can't call a single one of them now. Yeah. Like, so I've never, like... But you can't call them because you don't want to, or you can't call them because they don't have phones, or oh, you can't call them never because... Got the, never got their numbers, fucking yeah. can't so remember half their names, like... But it was just in that three-day session where we hung out, like... You know. So like, like kind of like um, the term I use is like single serving friends. They're your friends for a little bit and you're never going to speak to them again. Yeah, and then you never get bored. You never get let down. You know, like... So it's kind of like you don't really want friends as well. Like you're like, we can be friends for a bit, but I don't want to stay. I find that a hard question to ask myself. Like, I ask myself that, like, I want friends. Yeah, everyone wants friends, you know? Yeah. Everyone wants to be loved or everyone wants to, you know, be able to have fun or, you know, be accepted or... But um, I don't know. I don't. Every time somebody gets too close to me, where either I can hurt them or they can hurt me, that's where that's where I start fucking. That's yeah, where I start really freaking out, you know. Yeah. yeah. So. Uh, so do you reckon on the streets that was a lot of what it was with them? Well, there's none of that because you knew that. Because they were the same. Yeah, because they were the same. There was no. There was neither of you. You both knew that this was never going to be forever. Yeah. You, there was just an un, you didn't even have to talk about it. It was like, what are you doing, brother? Oh, walking around doing fuck off. You know, next minute you're fucking, oh, I got this and I got, oh, well, next minute you're doing whatever the fuck you're doing. But like the mold, the things I could list, like from fucking, I don't know, going to eat a fucking meal with someone in a restaurant and like, you know, I got 50 bucks, I got 50 bucks too. I want to go get a feed, yeah. Next minute you're sitting in a little Italian restaurant in Chinatown in the city, you know, with some stranger. But I mean, it was fucking wicked out in balls, you know? Yeah. Like, but it was just, yeah, life's just like, it's just moments of sequences and yeah. it just passes by, you know, like, yeah, there's no point being serious about it. Yeah, so do you kind of think like, like the difference between not being homeless and being homeless is like the interactions you have with people, you're more likely to, to turn it into something bigger or do you think that's kind of like your, your mentality all the time is like, you kind of want to avoid the, the idea of being a consistently ongoing friendship kind of thing? Um knows really eh? <laughs> like you want people to hang around yeah but you, I don't, you don't want to disappoint them yeah, yeah so like I don't know I find my, I, cut, I cut a lot of strings loose yeah before I get to the stage of working out who's going to hurt who yeah which I mean I'll cry about it later um, yeah I, I don't know I've never really been out of like Take people for like face value, like why are you, like why are you my friend? Why do you want me to come over? Oh, you like, you kind of think they're not really your friend. Yeah, There's something yeah, they're trying to get out of yeah. you. Yeah, all like everywhere. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, why are you helping me? Like, yeah. And I question question everything, which is which is pretty fucked up. Which is a lot of my own, I shadow a lot of people. So yeah. mate, hey, I probably could have a lot of friends if I wanted them. So it probably is me. But like, 
several times, you know, you hang out with the same people for three, four days out there, and then next minute you just, just next minute get up and leave, like leave the group, you know, and like without yeah. even saying anything, like, oh, what the fuck happened to you? Next time you run into them, like, oh, nothing, man, just wigged out, you know, like, yeah, because you're getting in your own head, or they don't like me, or they're talking about me, or like, you know, they'll say something that. I don't know, fucking, even if they're not talking about you, but you would think they are because it's something similar to what you've done or, you know, what, you, what you've done or, yeah, so. Yeah, and then obviously the drugs are probably making that worse. Oh, drugs and abandonment issues and depression and yeah, all the fun things, but, all yeah, fun things. <laughs> you know, but, like, it's, just, it's a part of life. Everyone, it happens to everyone, doesn't it? Like, everyone's, everyone gets sad. Everyone's sort of, it's just how you deal with it. Yeah, yeah. So it's what you do after you deal with yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And you th- like I said, you think a lot of them are probably doing the same things. Do you think that was kind of how you felt? They've all got that kind of same kind of thought processes? Oh, as much as you want to think people... I used to, nah, see, I used to think everyone, it was all everyone else, you know? Yeah. You know, so it was never me. It was always everyone else. Yeah. Um, yeah, I knew, I knew that it was probably me. Yeah. Um, whether they were invested or not, you know? Well, I mean, if you look back at it now, do you think they were kind of they had the same thought process of like, oh, they'd start thinking after three or four days, what's his cunt? Why is he being? Well, nah, because it'd, I'd always find it was me that it would me that me shadow, you know. You're the one that always kind yeah, of yeah. No one else would ever fucking shadow me, like yeah. Everyone else would always, oh, I'm gonna go do this now. Oh yes, where it is. Whereas I just one eighty on the spot, you know. Yeah. So like, but nah. you like obviously you felt like you were the shadow because it's you. But they do you ever think they might have thought they were the shadow to you, but you just didn't realise until you disappeared. Hey, very, very probably, you know. Very probably, I've never really thought about it. Yeah. Um. Yeah, probably. I mean, at the end of the day, everyone out there is sort of damaged. Yeah. Like whether they want to be there or not, they're they're pretty damaged. It takes a certain type of person to yeah be able to cope in that process, I guess. Oh yeah. Yeah. And like the longest stint you did when you were homeless was eight months. Yeah, about eight months. Yeah. That was without without a single night on a couch, you know. Yeah. That was without like making phone calls and. Sort of checking Facebook once a month and shit, you know, at yeah. the library and. But it was good. That that was when the, like there was, like, a little pickpocketing crew. Like, just there was it's a pretty weird little network. Like once you've done it for that long, yeah, you know, like the dude walking around with the trolley, like he's he's the man, you know, like, and once you knew who was doing what, it's a it's. I don't know. It's There's kind, a lot more going on. Like than you can you go can to a kebab. Like you can take stolen goods to. I can take you to a place where you can take stolen goods. In a, like, it's a kebab shop. Yeah. But if you've got electronics, gold, whatever, to this day, uh, you know, said too much already, but they'll buy it in cash, straight yeah. over the counter. Customers there or not, they don't give a fuck. But I mean, like, I don't know if that's to everybody. Definitely not. Otherwise, they would have been caught, you know? Yeah. But I mean, I was the silly prick that was burnt one night and decided to take all of my things to a kebab shop because I needed to swap it and just went, look, in front of everyone, bang, this is what I got, 30%, willing to take it or not. And like... They weren't Australian, not that that makes any difference, but they just cha-ching, cha-ching. Well, if, I, if you ever seen a kebab shop run by, um, like, white Australians, I'd be very surprised. Well, yeah. I've never seen one. Yeah, <laughs> hey, look, touche, amigo, touche, yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, and then they start putting in requests and... Yeah. That's, that's, this is, a, this is like a fucking, this is a shop, man, like... Yeah. They're meant to be good people, but... Oh, it's, it's, you know, people opportunistic. Yeah, this is, yeah, 100%. You know, and if it's certain people... Certain belief systems, all sorts of bits and pieces, you yeah. know. It's like if there's a place, they're like, ah, oh, this works for me, it yeah. works for you. Well, they were selling it. They were on selling it. Yeah, okay. So, like, even if you took them lock phones, they'd unlock the phones and sell them. Yeah. So, like, they was a fucking profitable business, you know. They weren't giving, we weren't getting fuck all. It was just cash yeah. over the counter, what were you expecting, you know. You get 50 bucks for a phone or something. But, I mean, when you had nothing, it was 2 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, nothing. Fucking earth. Yeah, yeah, 100%. And yeah. so, like... Obviously, that's like that. That probably would have helped feed the the, the stealing addiction, I guess. Well, yeah, but because you knew it was even it was viable. Uh, Telegram, like yeah. when Telegram come out, that was that was the big. That was that was when the whole like that sort of dark world opened for me. Yeah, like really, because like there were hundreds and not thousands of people that were like minded, wanted something for thirty percent of. That you know, this thousand dollars or three hundred. Well, I'm going to take the three hundred option every time. You know, yeah. Even if it is fall off the back of the truck, like even the good people, even even people that weren't in our world would be like, "Fuck, that's a good deal." Yeah. You know, so well, like back in the fucking in the nineties, there was supposedly vans that would drive around 
mm. with sound systems and TVs and shit in the back. Yeah, pop-up stores. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah. like, I can imagine that as soon as we've got the internet to kind of well, do that, it eliminate, of course people are going to buy it. All it did was eliminate the van, didn't it? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, it's like, I don't know, if, for people that don't know what Telegram is, you know, it's just... It's just a messaging app. Yeah, it's a messaging app, but it's, you know, for anything and everything. And, I mean, I was getting invited into groups. You yeah, added add a username. I was getting invited into, like, luxury shoppers and purse finest and, you know, but this is just groups dedicated to people that are selling <laughs> stolen merchandise. Yeah. So it was, the way the Telegram works, for anyone listening, if you don't know what it is, it looks exactly the same as any other messaging app out there. You get people's <laughs> contact details, you message between them. But then there's the other part of it, which is like groups. And there is yeah. groups for fucking everything and everything in the world. Like, a lot of people during the COVID times, if there were people that didn't want to get vaccinated, there was groups for that. If there's anything else, but then there's obviously the, there's the obviously drug side there, of it, the know, theft people, side of it, the crime side of it. You need some weed, you need some weed. Like, uh, thornly, thornly buds. Yeah. 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 Uh, the big, yeah, that was, it was shocking, really. Like, and it's, it still is shocking. It hasn't stopped. No, nah, yeah, I mean, it always would Next minute, you're going to catch up with an 11 year old. Like, no, nah, not really, not really, <laughs> not, not really, not really. I've never done it, but like, hey, look, it's, it is happening. Oh, for sure. Like, there's kids yeah, have phones. The, the teenagers these days, man, they're, uh, yeah, they blow my mind. They've got a lot more access to everything. Like, I know a group of 15, 16, 17 year olds sort of um, hanging out in the hoods, you know, but like, fuck, man. Like, if I was doing like, they're, Pretty fucking, you wouldn't fuck with them, you know, like, yeah, and bikes and money and whatever, you know, they, they're living the life, you know, and it's just like, fuck, man, at 15, I was playing RuneScape, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean? I was 15, yeah. I was skating, <laughs> yeah, I, I, was, I, was, I was playing RuneScape, yeah, yeah, thinking about Bricklane or something, yeah, yeah, and these kids are just racking, yeah, these kids are like, yeah, they're 450s and draped in gold, and yeah, but like, I mean, it's pretty obvious where they're going to end up because if you start that yeah. young, you, you've only got a life of crime ahead, right? Yeah, 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 but like. They're all doing weird shit now, like, with the internet and, like, yeah, it's, it's not so much... Ill- like, it is illegal. Like, scalping, like, scalping is an example, like... Yeah. By, like, they're just... They're doing that, but it's, so, so, it's sort of like a grey area, you know? Well, like, I mean, scalping isn't illegal. It's fucking annoying. Yeah. But it's not illegal. But they're doing, like... They've got their fingers in, like... The, the internet is where I'm going with it. Like, there's kids... Yeah. The inter- like, yeah, this... With the dark web and, like, you know, Louis Vuitton... Like, all the brand names and shit, like, they... Buy and sell, but they're just doing it a little bit naughtier. Yeah, they um, just they just didn't buy in the first place. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the old um, pay ID with the fucking. It's quite funny because, like, if you think of set the date for tomorrow and cancel the transaction. Well, you think of like ruining a how they want to remove cash from society. Yeah. And you go, oh yeah, this will solve all the problems. Like you got to imagine there's teenagers out there now as you're talking about, and you said pay ID, right? Mm. They're getting paid straight into their bank account. Mm. So if you remove cash from society doesn't matter that still happens and the banks still aren't stopping it now so how the fuck is it going to change you know and is, are you really going to stop all the bad stuff or do they only want to stop certain parts of the bad stuff you want to know where pay ID is the craziest pay ID what pay ID is the craziest in jail really bro that's how everything gets done in jail really yeah like the next minute oh brother yeah we get, get on the phone to a sister girl call yeah oh can you get this person send fucking 100 bucks to this number bang 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 next minute Bang, that person gets paid, checks it, whatever they want, they got, you know? Yeah. And it's, I suppose that's probably an upgrade from fucking being White Ox being the currency in there. Bro, no, <laughs> money is the currency. Yeah. Like, well, because now you can trade it between outside. Bro, people are gambling in there, like playing cards for $100, $100 hands. Yeah. But like, you know what I mean? Like, you're an old mate outside, I'm an old mate outside, we're bored as fuck, you want to pay for 100 bucks? get your Mr. Power Day mom. You know? And it's just like, all sorts of shit. But Power Day in jail, I was, yeah, just off topic, but yeah. Yeah. It's not off. Oh, it's part of it. Yeah, part of it, yeah it's, <laughs> just, it's off topic too much. Yeah, power it is. Another crazy thing. Like you said, like we really don't need money. Like, well, no, but the thing is, like they're trying cash. to. A lot of people that are against, you know, uh, removing cash from the economy. I don't think we should ever get rid of cash. I think it's a very necessary part of existence because hmm. if fucking anything goes down with any kind of technology, money still works, right? Yeah. So if we remove it, that's fucked. It's just not smart. Um, but the, one of the big reasons is that the, the reason they'll sell it, the idea of us removing cash from society, is that we can stop a lot more crime if we remove it. Yeah. But the thing is, the same ways that they're saying that they would catch crime from it happening is crimes that are already happening that way. Like if, if people are already getting paid and pay ID when they sell their stuff, mm. then the money's already going to a bank account. The money's already got a paper trail. And where'd it come from? And how do you justify it? 
that's another thing. Like, they're not very like. I don't know, there's probably too much of it to police for them to actually keep track of it, but like, yeah. how do you keep a track of all this disposable money? Like, pay ID money, you know? Like, yeah. Whether well, it's... So like, I mean, it's all... So if you've got AI and algorithms, it's pretty fucking easy in my eyes. But the thing is, why aren't they doing it? Like, what's the reason to not do it now? Because it's probably like, yeah, there's a certain amount of crime we've just got to allow. Well, yeah, otherwise it's profitable. Yeah. Crime is profitable. Yeah. For well, everybody. It keeps police in jobs, it keeps people in fucking jails. Lawyers, jobs. barristers, fucking... Bro, clerks, fucking, you name them. See, like community based, like you got your parole, parole officers, you yep. fucking, man, it's a big industry. Yeah. Like, and then you got the fines, you know, like my last fine alone, that was 39,700. 39,000? 39, my last court, yeah, for the jury shop because they wanted restitution, but yeah, 39,700. Jeez. And I mean, how the fuck are you ever meant to pay that? Well, I mean, not in jail. <laughs> well, yeah, because it will. Funny enough, you can pay your fines off in jail. Can you? But not because it was restitution. I couldn't. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because restitution goes to people, not the state. Yeah, it goes to the, the owner of the store. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry. <laughs> so is that how much it costs? Is that how much worth of stuff you stole? Yeah, it was fuck all, man. Like, yeah. Um, that's probably like including fucking up their store for the day and them having to go to court. Well, no, I didn't, I didn't, like, I didn't do any damage, you know? Yeah. Like... It was just, I was just an opportunity. Yeah. I was just an opportunist. I just walked into a pop-up store, seen an opportunity. Yep. Like everything was behind glass, like twenty-dollar braces behind glass. And then the, for some reason there was just this three cylinders, like this massive thing, and it like, had hundred and ninety-six silver antique chains on it. Yeah. And like, I didn't look, go there with the intentions. I just walked in there and seen it. You know, like me being me, just instead of grabbing one, I grabbed the whole fucking thing. Yeah. And um. I knew instantly, like, uh, I was going to, like, I literally called my partner at the time and was like, I'm going to jail. And I, she's like, what well, the fuck you done? And just get me the bus stop, you know? Yeah. Um, but it was probably a good thing, like, it, I was going down a pretty dark path. Yeah. Do you think that the opportunity wasn't the theft? The opportunity was the opportunity to, to fix something? Yeah, deep down. Yeah, like, deep down, yeah. Like, I'd, I was already on bail for heaps of things and... Like, I went, when I went to court, I only got jailed for three offences, but, I mean, there was 56 charges. So, like, I was just downwards, downward spiral, you know? Yeah. Um, and I knew that it was... I knew I was going to jail eventually. Yeah. Like, fucking... Probably 12 months before I even actually knew it, you know? Um, that was kind of the life you lived in. That, like- was my, that was the life I was living, and I knew that I was too deep in to actually want to help myself. Yeah. So I was like, fuck, at least jail, that's a reset, you know? Yeah, um, so you kind of think in your head like it's like a if I do this that bad that puts me there that forces me to stop as opposed to well, me yeah to yeah stop. if I if you can't fix the problem then eliminate yourself from it you know yeah so like I obviously I knew that I wasn't ever going to get away from using um, I was just doing dumber and dumber shit yeah like you know just well I suppose that's the thing if you went for like four or five years where you're like homeless and doing all these bits and pieces and then you finally get caught. Yeah, you know, like, I'd never stolen a car before and decided to steal two in a week. Yeah. And, and do a jewelry shop the one after, you know? So I was on bail for the two cars and then did the... And they were like, no, 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 you don't have enough now. Like, yeah. taking the piss, you know? You're already on bail for fucking six different things and you've got 50-something outstanding charges and... But, yeah, that was the straw. But, like, you shouldn't have got to that. Like, obviously, I was doing this shit trying yeah. to, you know, like... The amount of things I uh, fucking weirdly got let off for, like, I'm no fucking murderer or criminal, but, you know, the th- things that I've gotten away for, like, that other people haven't been, it's just like, fucking... Why didn't they, why did they get put away and I didn't? I always self-represented. Yeah. That's what I always put it down to. Like, even with the jewellery shop, uh, I went to self-represent, I used to, I used to call it a $5 lawyer, a bottle of port. So I'd get a bottle of port before I went to court, neck that, and have a few diaries and go to court, self-represent. Fuck. And I was standing there and th- every single time, like, no matter what... Magistrates, they all know me, you know, but like yeah. Freeman or fucking wherever, but like, Jackie, like, what are you doing? Like, you know, you can't self-represent. Like, well, I can self-represent, Your Honor. Like, you know, I'm the one that did it. And, like, he's just like, oh, well, this is the charge, the jewelry shop, blah, 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 blah. I went into details, like, guilty or not guilty. I was like, guilty, Your Honor. And he's like, Sigh. I was like, fucking, what's he signing for? There you go. Then I'm gone, I'm done, like, finally. And he goes, look, we're going to stand you down. We're going to give you a legal aid grant and you're going to go get a lawyer. And I was thinking, well, why? I've like, I was there. I literally said, I was there. I'm pleading guilty. Like, can't I come and just deal with it today? I don't want to come back. He's like, well, I can't actually give you any time unless you've got a lawyer. So that was when the penny clicked for me. Because I've always self-represented. They couldn't get you for anything, probably. Obviously, no fucking judge wants to tell you that you can't go to jail 
you know, when, they, when you have to go. Yeah, like if, if, you, if you're self-representing, they have to at least give you the chance to know what you're understanding about. Like they can't just take your fucking word like, yes, I'm guilty, I know what this is on about. Like you could be going to jail for this amount of time. Yeah. Like have you spoken to anyone about it? No, well, you got to go speak to someone first. So like uh, stood, stood me down for another month and a half, gave me six weeks, went and sent a lawyer. Within that six weeks, racked up a whole heap of other charges. Then fucking by the time I went to court with my lawyer, I had a heap of other charges to face as well. It made the deal even easier for him, you know? Yeah. But it was like, how do you have just sentenced me when I wanted to be sentenced? Fuck, I would have been out of jail two months earlier. You got all the extra probably, I, pro- pro- I would have got four months less time. Yeah. And I would have got out two months earlier. So that's six months less than what I would have done if he just took my guilty plea as a guilty plea. Yeah, but I'm assuming there must be some kind of weird rule where it's like... If they think you're too stupid or, like, they have yeah. to have a lawyer there to do that. Well, it would have definitely come down to, obviously, mental impairment, like, from them fucking up in the past. Whether yeah. they think it's because I'm too stupid or because somebody in the they past... They just have to assume that yeah. for everyone that doesn't yeah, have a lawyer. they've obviously sent someone that they shouldn't have. <laughs> well, someone's obviously got sued for it at some point. Like, yeah. oh, yeah, no, you weren't allowed. Yeah, by the way, he's actually got a brain injury and... Yeah. Well, do you, I mean, that seems like a pretty fucking bullshit loophole. Like, if someone's got no lawyer... Shouldn't they have someone there that can be a standing lawyer? It's probably dog shit. Well, that's, that's when you get the duty lawyers, you know? Yeah. But if you're like, the duty lawyers only have a certain amount of people in a day. And if you're not mm. there early enough, you don't get the duty lawyer, right? Mm. So I think the idea that if you didn't go away because you didn't have a lawyer to be able to tell you to go away for however long, like mm. even the fact that, you know, when you went back with the lawyer, you went to jail that day, right? Um, nah. So I went back to the... Uh, back with the lawyer, and then they adjourned it another couple of times. Yeah. Um, but after you got sentenced... Yeah, once, know. finally, once they sentenced me, then yeah, yeah, I went to jail. Yeah. Uh, with the lawyer up there. So do you think maybe they were like, we well, already know this guy's going to keep doing this shit. Maybe we should just yeah. let him go for a bit longer so he can rack up more charges. Well, that's probably one way of looking at it. Yeah, you know, <laughs> like maybe if like, we keep giving him bail and then we get to this amount, then we can send him to jail. Yeah. But I mean, you'd think that, but, but I don't know. Like I got bail that many times... It was ridiculous, man. Yeah. Like, I was, I'm not proud about it, but I was going to court fucking months a week for a good fucking four or five months there. That's a lot. That's like 20 times. And like, yeah, you're like, yeah, 100%. Like, literally, and that's no word of a lie. Yeah. Like, I remember like, one period I had court the 20th, the 21st, and the 22nd. So it was like three days, three different courts. It was Armadale, Mandra, and the city. Yeah. So, like... Do you think that they're fucking... There's a lot of people that are doing that, that are there that much. Like, were you hanging out with anyone that yeah. was kind of doing the same? Yeah. Yeah, unfortunately. But it's just like, but that's because... Like, You're not it, doing anything too bad. Like, a lot of it comes down to alcohol. Yeah. Like, um, yeah, a lot of the people that just yo-yo the watch house, it is all just due to piss. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, just get too sloppy on the street and drunk and disorderly or, you know, you get done for pissing in a bin or... And, like, cops in the city, like, when it comes to the homeless, they're pretty, they're, they're pretty keen to arrest you. Like, they don't really, you know, they, to, to them, you're a nuisance. Yeah. Which is, I, I guess, you know, they sort of are. We sort of are, but um, we're still human at the end of the day, you know? Yeah, yeah. So, like... Yeah, because they're just like, yeah, you're doing it again. Like, Fuck yeah. I don't know, there'd be more cops that are fucking just take their job too seriously than, like, obviously, obviously... Pretty the, serious job. Yeah, but I mean... <laughs> yeah, but... There's a lot of other ways. You don't have to slam someone's head into the floor for fucking trying to steal a feed. Yeah. You yeah. know, like... But I, th- it, I think when you've got police that are doing shit like that, it's in their head, they've made the story that they believe they're doing something to be so helpful oh, yeah. to society that you don't matter that much, that they forget that you're a human. You dehumanise to a bit. Yeah. And maybe they're like, if they've arrested you four or five times before and they're like, you keep getting out, this is bullshit, they're angry at the system more than they're angry at you, so they feel like hurting yeah. you in that process. Oh, that and, yeah, I don't know. You obviously do get the good cop, but yeah. I mean, the bad cop fucking, he just mate, kills it for the rest of them, you know? Yeah. Like, it just puts the stigma on them. Like, I guess we put the stigma on ourselves, but, um, yeah. And, like, well, dealing with cops, obviously, you've been arrested that many times, that much bits and pieces. Oh, yeah. What's, like, what is some of the bullshit things that you think that they, they do as, like, a they should or shouldn't be doing? Like, or they, they've done, you're like, you shouldn't have done that as a bad thing and a good thing. Um, like a benefit to you and not a benefit to you, I guess. I mean, they're never really helpful. They've never, like, I've never really been cooperative though, so I shouldn't really put it all yeah. on them, you know? Like, if I'm getting arrested, then do your job. Yeah. 
you know what I mean? If you're arresting me, then what are you arresting me for? Yeah. If you tell me what I'm arrested for, just say arrested for this, then all right, sweet as. Like, did, like, that's all I'm going to say. Yeah. You know well, what I mean? I mean like, the original start of the question is to try and get you to admit to stuff, right? Yeah, 100%. Yeah. So it's just like, what am I arrested for? Your suspicion of stealing? Okay. And then like, will you do an interview? No. Like, yeah. what evidence have you got? Show me the evidence you got. Like, that's the only time I go to the interview room is just to see the pictures they got of me. Yeah. And, like, from the pictures, I can work out if I need to talk or not. Yeah. You know what I mean? If I look at the pictures and I'm like, nah, they got a case here. Like, yes, that was me. Fucking, they'll send me home, you know? Yeah. Or if I look at it and go, nah, that wasn't me. Generally, sometimes I'd even say, yes, that was me. Just get the fuck out of there quicker. But, like, the longer you say it's not, the longer they hold you there. So, yeah. that's that's another tactic. That's, pr- there, there's your, that's the answer to your question. That's the tactic. Like... That's what they shouldn't do. Like, if you don't agree, like, do your job. Like, you don't have yeah. to hold me here for six hours just because I'm not telling you what yeah. you want to hear. Like, if you've got... Because they e- do get it wrong. Oh, fuck yeah. I mean, if you've got evidence, charge me. If you don't have evidence, fuck along. Yeah. Like, uh, when I was in Kazarena, as an example, like, one of my mates, he was going up on a murder charge and then up all getting dismissed after 21 years. He'd been in jail for 21 years sitting there and then it all gets dismissed because they didn't have enough evidence. Like, how can you find out after 21 years now you don't have enough evidence? Fuck. That, see that. Like, he used to paint all the cells, you know? Like, yeah. And, yeah. He's imagine like, spend 21 years in jail. He's like 70-something now. He's like, oh, oh, shit, old man, you know? Like, yeah. just lost the best years of his life, all for a murder that he didn't even commit. Yeah. Oh, well, who knows if he committed it or not. But, I mean, was found not guilty for. Yeah. Like, fucking hell. Well, I imagine his story is he didn't do it. Well, yeah. I mean, he's just been proven not guilty. So, I mean, yeah. they couldn't even prove it. So, yeah, Australia, one of the only countries you won't, won't get a payout. Was that because it was an appeal later on down the yeah, track? Yeah, he, he appealed it, yeah. Yeah. And then he ended up winning. Yeah. yeah. Is that was he, did he spend like time in jail trying to figure out the laws and shit to understand how he could appeal and whatnot? Or? Must, must have been something like that. It t- yeah. took him 21 years, the poor prick. Yeah. Yeah, fuck. Yeah. I couldn't imagine spending 21 years in a fucking jail to be nah, told, like, oh, not, yeah, nah. Especially not Kazarina being the maximum. Like, you can't even, because of your charge, Yeah. you can't even go to a minimum or medium security, you're stuck in Kazza. Yeah, stuck in the fucking, the big cells. Yeah, I mean, it's it's not that bad. <laughs> not. It, it's shit, but I mean, the worst part about jail is the boredom. Yeah. Like, if you can do with boredom, it's, fuck, you're fed, there's clothes, there's TV, there's fucking cards. Yeah. Like, there's a, if you want to work out, there's enough equipment, you know. If well, you, you've got money, water, yeah. money in there now by the sounds of it, if you've got someone outside to swap yeah. money over someone else. Well, I mean, yeah, fucking hell. I mean, I couldn't get diaries for a bit, so I started drawing. And I was drawing borders on, like, lined paper for people to write to their partner's letters. Yeah. You know I mean, like, silly. But that was, that was enough to get me my three or four smokes for the night. Yeah. You know, once we get locked in, and fucking happy days, you know. Yeah. All it took me was a $12 packet of pencils. Killer. Yeah. I guess that's like fucking finding a, a business in jail. Oh, it's just, yeah, maybe me, survive. Yeah. yeah. Finding the means to an end. Yeah. I need a cigarette. <laughs> that was the only thought I had was, I need a cigarette. Yeah. And what do I got to do? Draw some fucking wait, lines. Yeah. Wait, people, I can draw roses. Yeah, kill. I just draw roses and. Yeah. Next minute, fucking this. Everyone wants them. Yeah. You got sick of drawing them. <laughs> Fuck your smokes. I got smokes now. I don't need it anymore. No. <laughs> So, like, you enjoyed being homeless, right? There was a part of it that you loved. Yeah, yeah. Um, like, I don't miss it, but I miss it. Yeah. So, like, the bills, yeah, I, I, just, I just get overwhelmed too easy. Like, everyone's like, that's just fucking life, man. Get the fuck over it. Like, yeah. you need to work. You need to have, like, get a house. You need to, but you fucking don't. Yeah. Like. Well, you've seen how to not do. Yeah, like, I guess you do, like. See, so I'm contradicting myself. You do if you have, if you want a family, or if you've got a family, or if you've got other people depending on you, or yeah, then you, you know I wouldn't recommend it. It'd be fucking hard with a family, let's be honest. Yeah. But I mean, if you've only got your hole to worry about yourself, and it's fucking good, man. Yeah. It's uh, no worries, no problems. Like you know what you're capable of. You wake up in the morning, like man. Waking up with the sunset, the amount of times I've woken up like on a beach, like in Jindalee or fucking down Dawesville or just like, you know, in a two-storey fucking place is being built, like, you, you know, a new building, like, no one wants to sleep in sand, fuck, there's a new building, like, Jindalee's packed full of, like, wherever. Yeah. Wake up to a sunset and then a fucking master, bed, like, I don't know, it doesn't get better than that. Yeah. Like, you know, and you just wake up and you do your thing and you're like, oh, that's sweet, into your day and you're pretty easy. Like, I don't, you don't need anything to be happy. Yeah. Like, you... you I don't need a lot these days. Yeah. Because I suppose you've lived through the parts of having nothing. Yeah, like, yeah. 
give me give me a change of clothes a day, I'm happy. <laughs> change really. of clothes and yeah. shower. Like bills, yeah, normal life stress me out. Yeah. Like you go to work to fucking pay for a house that you go you never in and you're struggling and you can't do the things you want to do and everyone's like, yeah, that's life. And but that's fucking that's a bit that stresses me out. Yeah. Whereas when there's none of that, because no, there's dependence on you to do stuff. Yeah, like eight hundred bucks a fortnight from Centrelink. If you're not paying rent, that's a fucking lot of money. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, if eight hundred bucks a fortnight. If you're not it's, paying bills, it's probably lower than everyone's rent right now. Yeah, but I'm but yeah, I'm in a two by two by one. We're paying like six fifty a week. Yeah, yeah, that's that's probably a good deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah we're looking pretty crazy out there. Eight hundred seven. Yeah, it's ridiculous. And like, man, that stresses me out. Yeah, and then bills on top that's of weekly. It. I get eight hundred four night. Fuck that! How do we eliminate this problem? Eliminate the house, boy. Well, yeah. Yeah. And now eight hundred bucks for heaps. But if you if you don't have an address, you can't get selling, right? Yeah. You can? Yep, you need a bank or you need a bank account. Yeah. Yeah. If you don't have an address, you can't get a referral from a doctor for a psychiatrist. Yeah. Okay. I didn't know that. Yeah, I found that out the hard way. Oh yeah? Yeah. No, when I was, you know, you finally like obviously there's a lot of dark times there, you know? So yeah. When you finally had enough and you are having a bit of a cry that week or whatever and you try to get some help and you know, that's that's the information you find out. Really? So yeah. even though we've got the like, Medicare and everything here and yeah, we've got so like, I had a mental my, health plan. I had my Medicare card, um, all of that sort of shit, but they wouldn't. The, my doctor couldn't actually write a referral because uh, he couldn't send the person couldn't send the letter to my address, and like I didn't have a phone at the time, so no email, no phone contact, like. And that's it. And you were looking for help. Yeah. And then what do they say? Just like well, sorry, um, can't we do can't it. do a referral because you don't have an address for him to send the applicant like the approval to. So you will never know. Like you'll just, you'll have to come back, and it was just turned into this big mission, you know. Yeah. But um, yeah, like. That's kind of fucked up. Well, I couldn't get Centrelink for a long period there because I had to go to birth test marriages to get my birth certificate. Yeah. But um, because like I didn't talk to my mum for a long time, my dad passed away when I was younger, I couldn't answer enough questions about my dad the first time I went there for him to like, believe it was me, you know? Yeah. So I couldn't even get my birth certificate to prove I was, to open a bank account, because I didn't have ID, to get on Centrelink. But, like, so it was just like, fuck. Yeah. And, like, that was... That was like that's not the I was already doing what I was doing before this happened. Yeah. But that was when it just that's when it really kicked into fuck the system. <laughs> like yeah. my jaded like that's when I really turned into this Were you homeless before that, that happened or was that like I wasn't homeless at this stage. Yeah. Um I was I was in a relationship, but uh, it was f- You obviously weren't working because that's why I was trying to get selling. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't working and it was a very toxic relationship. So three nights of the week I was I wasn't homeless, but I was on the, I was out there doing my thing. Yeah. It was just fucking can't deal with it, yeah. Yeah, and then you're like, oh, I need to kind of change some shit, try to get sent link. Yeah, try to help myself and then you yeah, couldn't and yeah. fuck this then. Yeah. That's when it developed, yeah, just went fucking same, next level. Same with the doctors and psychiatrists then. Yeah, like I'm helping myself now, but like it's funny that from going to jail, that's how I got my birth certificate. Yeah, So okay. jail actually, because you're in jail, they obviously know who you are, you fucking, they just locked you up. So like they got my birth certificate, um, which was good. Um, they got my proof of age card. I got my forklift ticket in jail. I did my confined space entry. Um, so I paid seventy-two dollars off and seventy-two thousand dollars off in fines. Seventy-two thousand off yeah, in fines in jail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're only in for eleven months. Yeah, it's that sounds like a better job than fucking. It's three hundred and forty dollars a day. You pay off your fines in jail. Really? Yeah. So you can like choose to be like, I'm in jail now. Take- well, it's not, a, it's just I'm in jail. It just happens naturally now. So yeah. you, you see a transitional manager and sign a few paperwork and do a few signatures. And the only fines it doesn't pay is infringements. Yeah. So like driving offences. Yeah. And ret- restitution. Yeah. So like. Which goes back to the person. That- yeah. So just say you, you went and did something gnarly, fucking robbery or whatever. You got fined, say $4,000. That would actually get paid off with your sentence. So like you're getting fined $4,000 and do a fucking two year sentence. But don't worry about the excuse. So realistically, they're just saying, we're just going to... Whereas you go to jail for this long and when you get out, every single fine you've ever had is going to be paid off unless it's an infringement. It's like, fucking not. So you tell them I can go do an 11 months student, get my birth certificate, pay $74,000 off in fines. You're never going to be able to do that in a fucking million years and 12 months on the outside. We're not going to do that in fucking 12 months. Yeah, not in fucking five years, 10 if, years. If, if you go, the average wage in Australia is fucking 75 grand. Like 10 years, that's seven grand a year. Nah, I'm good. <laughs> yeah, that's... um. So like if that's fucking wild. Eleven months, it's pretty good. Yeah. Like if, yeah, I don't know. I reckon. Except you didn't like jail at all. No, no one, no one likes it, but it, it's it's. It's uh, obviously worked out kind of well for you because it's kind of changed your path. Makes you appreciate what you, makes you appreciate the little things again. Yeah. You know, if you've got a bit of a big head and 
running around like you own the joint and yeah, no, jail's good to bring you back to earth. Yeah. Do you think a lot of people get that from jail? Surely, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it gives you a lot of luck. Cause you, because you've only got yourself and, I mean, you can only use that phone for 10 minutes at a time. That's if you've got money. Um, gives you a lot of time to think yeah. about, like, the little things, you know. Um, or it does the opposite and just teaches you not to give a fuck about nothing. Yeah. So, I guess... That's sort of the, yeah, another trouble I'm having now is I find I don't I need a little I'm trying to learn to care again. Like, yeah. But about like things you really should care about. Yeah. Um. Like yourself. Yeah. Or like yeah. Or like anything. Yeah. Like fuck, I might end up homeless tonight. <laughs> oh well. Like. I mean, they've done that. <laughs> yeah. Or like you know what I mean? Like nothing's really worrying at the moment. Yeah. Like, I could die tomorrow. And, oh, I don't know. Fucking could get hit by a car and whatever. Uh, let's not touch wood. Yeah. Like, let's make it all about me in case something does happen. But yeah, like, but anything if, without it going into it. Like, yeah. Yeah. What was the funniest thing you've seen on the streets? Like, what was the most Fuck. ridiculous story you've got for me? Fuck. I don't know. Everything out there is pretty ridiculous, man. I can imagine, but I've got to hear some. <laughs> Probably Northbridge, man. Northbridge on a Friday and Saturday night. Like, yeah. oh, that's obviously, it's an obvious, but, um, fuck, where do you go? Like, any Friday, Saturday night, there's a story. Yeah. But, um, the, fuck. Probably just people, like, I don't know, the sex. Yeah. Like, like, the sex on the side of the road, like, in Northbridge. Really? Like, like from, like, oh, just homeless people yeah, or from other people? Yeah, nah, yeah, from, like, people with, like, really drunk normal people with, like, there was this one indigenous lady, she was funny as man. A big girl, homeless. Um, she fucking always always loved her wine, but she was like friendly as and I don't know, she'd always dole herself up on Friday, Saturday nights, like the best she could, you know. And yeah. like go into clubs and like find some some bloke that was uh, heavily intoxicated. Yeah. And just like take advantage of him, really. Like, you know, like but she just come back to my house sort of thing and like her house was like on the side of the road, you know. Yeah. And like I don't know, every so often you'd be the same bird. Um, yeah, she was just been out. She was actually worried. Or I don't know, all the gas the gas huffers in Northbridge. The what? Like, there was an old couple. They were like a demonic couple. Like studied like demonic ritualism and like a uh, snake by a tongue and yeah. Uh, but they used the butane straight out of the can. Butane. Yeah. So like the barbecue. The no, rich, no, I know what butane port- is. Yeah, do, um, for the people that don't, no. Nah, yeah. The, like the portable gas cookers. Yeah. So they'd be sitting on the side, like literally on the curb, just like. And, like, the bloke, he was, I don't know, he was fucking, like, everyone else was scared of him, you know what I mean? Yeah. But, like... Were they that, homeless as well? Yeah, 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 yeah. And, like, they cadged. I always had a coin pan out and, um, like, she'd be speaking in tongues, doing weird shit, and he'd be fucking, I don't know, like, disturbing, but he'd be wanging on the side of the road or, like, yeah. talking about beheading goats and, like... But, like, if you fucking actually sat down with him and started talking to the bloke, like, that was all really a persona. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it was to get people to fuck off. Yeah. So, like, I don't know. I was, he ended up with one of my good mates, you know? Yeah. Like, you'd sit down and you'd have full-blown conversations with him and he's like, ah, oh, yeah, this life shit and, you know, fucking what are you doing, blah, blah, blah. But, like, he'd always have a gas can in his hand, you know? Just half and boot home. And, like, I mean, it wasn't really helping him, but, fuck, I'd always chuck him a couple of bucks to get another can, you know? Like, yeah. Well, that's what made him happy. Like, who's the judge? Like, I've never heard of anyone ever half and boot. Oh, bro, and like, it. he can't hear that blue lip. Like, he, he used to get bad. But yeah. like, and he'd have it up his sleeve and he wasn't hiding from anyone, you know? Yeah. Like, it was up his sleeve, but it was right there. And the red cans, green, it didn't matter. Like, you could literally go get him lighter fluid and he'd... It's just any kind of gas he could. Any, any inhalable. Yeah, he'd probably give deodorant a go if he ran out. Uh, yeah. Jeez. It was fucking... But I mean, he's, he'd hallucinate on the shit, man. Like, well, I mean, I feel like you're close to death. They can't be good for you in any way. Yeah, I've never. Why? That's. <laughs> I mean, Nang's is one thing. Well, if, that's like they use that in dentists. You know, nitrous even, oxide is a is a even, known medicine. That, even that that's just starving the brain from oxygen. That's not actually essen- how it works. Essentially, I've, I've research it's not actually how it works. Really? Right? Yeah, no. That's a that's an old wives' tale. Oh. Yeah. Let's, not, let's go get a box of Nang's then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a, it. Actually, it's not how it works. It's, right that's the belief, but that's not actually truly the belief. This is why we don't believe everything we hear in Siri. Oh, read yeah. on the internet. Yeah. But um, other gases, I can't imagine. Like that's. Well, no, but like I've been. You ever had frostbite? 
Frostbite? No, yeah. I haven't. You know, a little bit of like butane on the arm or something. Like, oh, fuck. Oh, like smart, like yeah. uh, Frosty's yeah, from like a- aerosol cans when yeah. you're a kid. Yeah. yeah, I can't imagine what that would do to your lungs. Dude. Because there's like, there's no. Fucked, man. <laughs> there's, he hasn't got no protection or nothing. It's just like. Just straight out of the can. Yeah, yeah. Straight in. But, um. <laughs> fuck. That's wild. Yeah, I don't know. I could go. There's so many stories, man. Like, there was these two little, two, two, two twins. And I mean, they'd go into the Tag Hewer store. And ask to look at it, like who, who the, why would you even give this kid a watch to look at? And like they just boost, yeah. Or like they'd go to like Prada or you know like uh, just young kids, yeah, just sixteen, two twins, yeah. I don't know, just the shit that people get away with. That's probably the big eye opener. Yeah, like the like how much is just constantly happening? Yeah, like theft. every everyone's sort of in on it, you know. Yeah, like well, all the the street people, even the kebab shops, even. Yeah, I suppose they're not really yeah. street people, are they? Yeah, it's not like. Yeah, I don't know. Not, you don't really know until you're exposed. Yeah, it's like everybody wants to help us, but everyone's keen to... Take advantage of the situation. Yeah, benefit from, yeah, what they can get for, out of us, you know? Yeah. Do you reckon there's like... I mean, you've probably really... Like, do you reckon the cops know quite a lot of what's going on as well? Oh, fuck yeah. And they just, yeah. they just let it run? 100%. Fucking, yeah. yeah, they'd have to. They'd have to. Like, there's six hundred and. 40 odd cameras in the CBD alone. Yeah. There's probably more now. This is going back years, you know, when I was there. But, um, like, that's just, that's just the CBD. Yeah. Like, that's just one, one block, essentially, you know? So, like, fucking, yeah, they know what's going on, man. Yeah. Like, but... What can they do about Jay it? Jay was a fool. Like, there's, it's, there's, there's not a lot they can do about it. Yeah. And, I mean, they arrest us, we get bail, we do it again. Yeah. And, I mean, there has to, like, that's where the system's gone wrong. There needs to be some sort of... Like, as a homeless, a homeless shelter is an example. You're homeless, you go to a homeless shelter, it's 150 bucks a week. You got to pay? 150 bucks a week. It's not really a homeless To go to the shelter. Salvation Army homeless shelter. You got to pay? 150 bucks. You can't get Centrelink, so how do you pay? So you're going to go to a good crime, because it's the only way you get the money. Yeah. Can't, well, I mean, it could be. And then you self represent and tell the judge this, and yeah. he, he agrees with you as well and gives you bail. <laughs> yeah, I mean, makes sense, right? Yeah, like, I can't do blah, 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 blah. This is why I'm doing it. And fucking, you know, I am a piece of shit. I do accept it. I am sorry for the people that I've hurt. Not that I'm affecting anyone because of insurance reasons. And you say all this, like, bluntly honest, like, yes, blah, 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 blah. And it just says, oh, fuck. You've got a logical argument. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> shit. Yeah. And generally in court, all you have to do is find a legible argument. It's logic, yeah. yeah. The idea of court is logic. Yeah. You just, I mean, is there plausible it's... doubt? <laughs> yeah. Like, he didn't do this because of the reasons we thought he did it for. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what was something that um, I suppose you've probably told me what really open drives about being homeless what's something like being homeless taught you what's like your best skill that you think being homeless taught you a like good skill or bad skill either one that you're most proud of there we go that's kind of <laughs> oh, <laughs> fucking hell <laughs> oh, see like I don't know, probably stealing, man, like... Yeah. I could, there's... What do you want? As you in, get it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, that's the point it sort of got to. Yeah. Um, it might not be today, but I mean... You yeah. can figure out the way to get it. Yeah, I sort of wish I brought my missus here. Like, she, she'd be like... So many times she's been like, why? Like, why the fuck? And, like, just... Why not? Like, to see if I could... Like, the TV, the 16-inch TV and shit. Like, you shouldn't be able to get out of Audi with a 16-inch TV. Yeah, well, you'd think not. But yeah. you can't. Nah, yeah. So do you think what what's the what's the positive of that then? What's the positive part of like you you got really good at skilling, you understood how to steal, mm. and you go, now I know it can be done. What's the thing that you reckon you can take from that, that that's you're like you're proud of that now? You're like, ah, I know that I can do it, I can do it. It's a, it's a great skill that did serve its purpose in all that time. I know so that now you're out of jail and you don't want to do it anymore. What's the thing that it did kind of See, that's the that's the yeah, that's the thing. It's not that I don't want to do it anymore. You know you can't. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, uh, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah, it's not that I don't like, I mean, it's not that I want to do it, but who the fuck wants to pay $26 for some steaks? Yeah. As an example, you know. 26 for steaks? Yeah, like, you got to go, go get some more, oh, for the steak. You're, you're, man, you're, you want a barbecue tonight? Yeah. Brother, man, you're eating barbecue tonight, there's, there's you know, 20 bucks in steak alone. Yeah. And that's just two pieces of steak. Yeah. No, you're like I could just take it. Yeah, no, yeah, and I mean it's it's wrong. Yeah, but it's victimless essentially. Yeah, well, I mean, if Coles and Woolies. Yeah. So do you think 
obviously now you, 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 you got that and you go, what's the positive side? If you look at it and go, I mean, for me, I'm kind of trying to, I can't see one myself. It's mm. hard. If you go like, I know things cost this, but I could have them. And it's, you know, you've got, you've got to do justifications there of why it's victimless mm. and whatnot. Like, I don't really know how to, to take something that can go like, this is a skill you've got. Is it a, I guess it's like a perspective that no one else has. Well, yeah, I mean, it takes a lot of trial and error, put it that way. That's why I find it a skill now. Yeah. Because, I mean, it took a lot of... Getting caught. Yeah, bro. <laughs> yeah, it took a lot of fucking embarrassing moments. Yeah. Uh, shameful moments, like, not very happy moments, but like... But that was because you had to, because you needed to eat. Yeah, essentially. Um, and then it got... And then, and then it yeah, then it developed into what it was. Um... I don't know, man. What's, what's a way that you reckon they could stop thieves? Like, that they aren't doing now? Like, what's something... I don't, like... I really don't think with how it is, it'll ever really stop. Like, ah... Uh, it's shit, but I reckon it's going that far that... Fuck, I don't know. Like, there's going to take something huge to change. Yeah. Like, it all comes down to addiction, yeah? So, like... Yeah, yeah. Unless they do something about addiction, thieving's only going to get worse. Yeah. Because I think, I think the way I kind of see it is... If the price, if your justification here is the price of something is too expensive to not pay for it. Mm. Like, you go, as you said, steaks. Two steaks, 20 bucks each. Yeah. Well, why would I pay for that? Like, if you look at a return of a date of, like, what the average work person gets paid. Mm. You get paid 35, 40 bucks an hour. You just go, well, it cost me an hour for that bit of meat mm. when I can get it for free. Mm. So, do you think maybe it's something to do with the fact that the price of everything is unjustifiable and there isn't enough free money for you to go like, well, I've got this, so I could pay for it. Because at the same time, I could steal it, but I've got the money and the money doesn't really bother me to get rid of it. But because it's not play, not from a place of like scarcity, you know what I mean? Like if you've got no money, you're going to steal. But if you've got, if you had unlimited money, right? Would you steal? Yeah. Me? Because of the that's, game. That's the fucked up thing. Yeah. Yeah. So like I got given some inheritance yeah. a few years ago, um, about 120 grand. Yeah. Unfortunately, my camera died during this episode. So if you want to hear the rest of the podcast, shoot over to Spotify or Apple or wherever else you find podcasts and listen to it there.